Thank you so much, everybody. My name is Keith Kelfus. Thank you for having me here. It's a great pleasure and opportunity to uh, present and share what I've learned about marketing and developing uh, systems to automate the sales and marketing inside of your service business. Uh, raise your hand, anybody here who considers themselves an expert at marketing your business? Anybody here who is intermediate, like you know how to market, you spend some money on marketing and advertising, but not a pro? And raise your hand again, let me see. Okay, who here is a, is a novice at marketing? You know some about it, but you're so busy out working and doing the, the work and, and running the business that it's, it's very hard to find the time to actually do the marketing, even frustrating? Anybody? Okay, and then who here is like, pretty much doesn't know anything about marketing and you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants, but, but you're getting a lot of word of mouth and leads organically like that? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, what I wanna talk about today is based on the back of the competency progression model and going from learning absolutely nothing about marketing your business to all the way to the point where you're fully competent, like you're unconsciously competent, you know it, you're fluid in it, just like you speak the English language, and then you can start to delegate those tasks to, to other people so you're not staying up all night uh, doing it. Uh, I have a landscaping and window cleaning business in Michigan, and I still find myself up at night at, till 2 a.m. doing the marketing. It gets very frustrating because you'll start something, and then as soon as your hand isn't on it, it falls apart, and then you do it. So you, you have a business to run, and you have a million things to do. But anyways, this is called the, the marketing progression pyramid, and how this works is the very first stage of the pyramid at the bottom here is unconscious competence. You literally, you don't know that you don't know. So, does anybody, has anybody ever heard of the, comp, uh, the competency progression model? Can you tell me a little bit about what it is? Uh, the fastest way, here you go. The fastest way for me to explain it is along with that, um, one of the definitions of that model is an inchworm. An inchworm kind of pulls its, it stretches out and then it pulls its back up and it stretches out as it walks and it pulls its back up and it keeps catching up to itself. So as you learn through the uh, uh, model, you're, you're improving your day to day. You're better than you were yesterday. That's probably the fastest way to explain it for me. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're, you're blind and you don't even know it until you walk a mile and you see a mile. So the first steps are unconscious incompetence. Like the very, very first is you don't even know that you don't know, so you don't even know what questions to ask. And you're just blind out there trying to do whatever you can to quote unquote get work and keep the hopper full. Now, that's like you know nothing. The very, very next step of that is uh, conscious incompetence. Pardon me, I, I am slightly dyslexic, so. <laughs> So conscious, conscious incompetence with your marketing is that when you get to phase number two, and that's where you start asking questions. You start looking out at what other people are doing in their marketing. Like you get mail that people are marketing things to you. You see it all over the internet. You see it all over the place. Then you start seeing marketing everywhere. Everybody's trying to sell you something. Everybody has something for sale. There's a marketing piece. And marketing really is, it's creating a promise. Hello, check. It's creating a promise that you'll deliver a specific result to XYZ audience or, or person or potential client. You're creating promises, okay? So when you start looking out, that's kind of dangerous as well because in the second phase, it's called copycat marketing. If you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, you don't know marketing psychology, then what can happen is you start just copying what everybody else is doing because, hey, it looks good. It seems like they're working for them. I don't know their data. I don't know their analytics. I don't know if they're even getting any results, but this company's website looks like that, so I'm going to model what they're doing. But because of the copycat marketing, literally 80% of the people out there that are doing marketing, they're actually just copying everybody else. So it's all copycat marketing going on, but we don't know specifically what is the message we're putting out and what is the direct response we're looking to elicit to, to, to get the phone to ring, to get to somebody to fill out a contact form on our website. And the whole reason we're talking about this is so we can get leads flowing in like crazy, so we can make the phone ring all the time. So not only are we getting 
Uh, leads coming in when it's really, really busy, but also when it's slow. So you're never in that position where you're, you're worried about like, um, is the phone gonna stop ringing? Am I afraid to hire somebody else? Can I make this next move or elevate my lifestyle? What if the work stops? So learning all this, and the reason why we're talking about all this is so you can have leads coming into your business all the time and you don't have to worry at all ever again about if you're going to quote unquote have money coming in. Does anybody ever worry about you know, what if all of a sudden the work stops or does it get really slow, especially? What, what months for you guys, based on what states you're in, does it get slow? Summer. Summer? It's really weird, yeah. What business are you in? Landscaping. Texas. Do you have a spring rush? Yeah, so spring is super busy, fall is super busy, and like, Winter, what, June drinking. to August, June to September is like the slowest months. It's really weird. <laughs> Super okay. backwards from what it normally is. And when I was, so it, I was like, oh, it's, you know, summer's a business. When I started running these numbers and I was like, holy crap, I'm different than everybody else I've heard in that my summer is the slowest time. And I make a killing. What well, last? Winter was the Last uh, January, I think we made 43,000 that month. Interesting. So it goes like this, but it's a roller coaster and it falls off a cliff. That doesn't fall off a cliff, or it did. It's mm -hmm. getting a little better, but yeah, it, it dips down and then comes back up. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some things that I've learned that are really phenomenal low cost and no cost ways to market your business because uh, when I started, I was completely flat broke in a one bedroom apartment with my wife. Like we had an eviction notice at one point and I didn't have any money to spend or experiment on anything. So getting really good at things called a guerrilla marketing tactics are things that can help you a lot. And I, I, I want some of your input as well, but as right now you have business cards, door hangers, flyers, uh, magnets, bandit signs that you could put out and then you can get into targeted marketing like anybody do postcard mailings send yep yeah. send gym postcard mailings those work as, as well and doing define uh, marketing and target areas uh, another thing that's amazing right here is anybody get into ringless voicemail yeah and send gym yeah. yep does any, anybody do email marketing yes. you do email marketing as well okay so what happens on this journey is when, when you go from stage two to uh, conscious incompetence, you go to conscious competence. Like this is where you know how to do marketing now. Sorry. So you start to get excited because like you, you learn, oh my God, when I'm creating a flyer on my website, how many colors do you want? Well, actually a maximum of two, a, a, bare, a, a, a total maximum of three colors, but you want maybe two colors max, two fonts max. If you have too many colors and too many fonts going on, it becomes confusing to the customer and then they, they, they don't know what to think. There's like, there's just for some reason, has anybody ever looked at a website and it doesn't look trustworthy? but you look at a major corporate website and it looks like very trustworthy. There's just something that happens in the subconscious mind where you're like, I'm in the right place and I know I can trust this because it's, everything's formatted. It looks extremely clean. So once you become conscious about this, and I wanna give you some resources right now that you can write down and take notes. Does anybody listen to audiobooks? There's some phenomenal books that you can pick up and listen to while you work that'll like enlighten your mind on all of this. So basically, uh, we're gonna write here, literally everything by Seth Godin. He's written books like The Lynchpin. He wrote a book called Permission Marketing. What is that? Purple Cow is an amazing book. He talks about, uh, here's a good example. Uh, there's a plumber in Michigan where I live, literally the entire side of his van is like a half naked dude sitting on the toilet, but when he rolls it down the window, it's him driving. So like, that's a purple cow, you can't miss that. But doing things that are uh, bold, that other people notice and they can't forget. It could just be in the way you serve your customers. Maybe you send all your customers gourmet brownies and you knock their socks off. When you become bold with your marketing and you start to become really conscious and competent about that, then what happens on this third phase right here, when you're getting really, really good at it, you start to get uh, not only experimental, 
but you start to have fun with it. Are the batteries dying on this? Is it? Check, check. Right. You start to have fun with your marketing. You start dabbling in, in Facebook ads, launching a Google ads campaign. Does anybody do Facebook or Google ads? Okay, so you, you get excited about your marketing, but the next thing is you can get overwhelmed and frustrated because you're trying to run a business all day and then you're trying to manage the marketing at the same time and at night. Cool. Let's try this. All right, check, check, cool. All right, one second. Okay, so I wanna give you the tools that, that you can use to take the marketing in your business in-house and take it in, into your own hands so you can control it. When you hire other companies to do your marketing, I, I won't say uh, who they are, but some of them, they'll actually, they take hold and now you're basically leasing that property and that real estate from them. So if you ever stop paying them money, all the work that you've created with them, they can they take down or they can take away from you at any moment. Does this make sense? So, but you might get afraid to take the marketing in house or you're apprehensive about that because you actually, you don't have the time to do all this stuff. If you do, I say over the winter in your downtime, go crazy and start creating a huge organic marketing campaign inside of your business by creating blog posts. Here, uh, I need more place to write here. Does anybody do uh, search engine optimization in their business, write blog post articles? Okay, so most of you are so extremely busy running the business that it's hard to do all this, right? So I'm gonna get to the next step here in a second, which is the thing that just like blew my mind and changed everything for me. But So uh, blog post articles, you obviously start an Instagram page for your business, a Facebook page, and all domain authority sites. You want to find the top 50 domain authority sites and you can look this up and you should create profiles on every single one of them because these domain authority sites have strong backlinks that you're going to link back to your website. Uh, Yoast, Yex, local SEO, uh, every single locus, local business listing that will allow you to create a profile on it for free. You should do this and spend the time. It might take you like 10 hours to do it, but if you do it and you make sure all of your information, your business information, your phone number, your contact, uh, the biography, everything, just like you were to create a profile on LinkedIn, make sure it's matching across all of these domain authority sites as much as you can do. This is something that you might pay a company $1,000 to do. That's all that they're really doing. They're just creating an interconnecting spider web of backlinks on the internet and running it all back to your website. Yes, yeah, so uh, Google's bots, what they're doing is they're running scripts. Everything that you publish on the internet, whatsoever at all, you, uh, everything, a picture, a blog post, even a post on Facebook, Google's bots are always scanning that and they're reading the keyword density, what is it about, and they're categorizing it through search engine optimization. They're categorizing it to a library. Imagine if you walk through a physical library and you see like drama section, this is the section on a healthcare plant. It takes the information that you're publishing online and it puts it where it belongs based off of whatever the content is. So when you start becoming aware of this and deliberately creating information in your business, like um, let's just say you shot a YouTube video about, do we have a lot of landscapers here? Okay, you shot a YouTube video about landscaping, you put heavy keywords in the title saying, uh, best landscaping service near me in Atlanta, Georgia with the zip code. And then inside of the description, you write a whole description about the landscape project based off things that customers that are actually locally typing in and searching for. And then you fill out all of the tags on YouTube and now you publish those videos like once a week, right? Here, I, I wanna show you something. Can I actually like raise this up? Where? Sweet. All right, check this out. My only worry today is that I like don't overwhelm you guys. Am I, can I turn this off? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Sweet. Sweet. 
right. Yeah. So here's what I'm talking about. Here's the top of your funnel right here. And when I talk about the top 50 domain authority sites, you're obviously going to have your Facebook. You're going to have Instagram. You're going to have LinkedIn. You're going to have Yext. Uh, any local citation website that will allow you to create a presence. Just literally look this up. Top 50 local. Uh, Top 50 local uh, small business search sites. It, it'll pop right up in Google. You can find this. There's, there's something called Yext, Y-E-X-T. They want you to pay for the service, and they're just literally doing this for you. But you don't have to pay for them. You can do it all yourself. So all of these lead sources, uh, you have you know, Google Ads, you have F Facebook. All of these are all of your lead sources. Now, probably 20% of your... 80% uh, of your leads are going to come from 20% of your lead sources, which would be probably Google My Business and probably word of mouth. But you still want to have a presence on all these other sites because you're creating these backlinks. A backlink is, is basically the custom unique URL that you get, like your facebook.com forward slash your business, linkedin.com forward slash your name. These URLs, when you place them on your website and then you embed them inside of what the Google bots is searching, say if it's on a blog post article, a YouTube video, a description, they say this is a blog post, anything that you're creating and publishing online that has these backlinks going into it that's linking back to your website, which is your main home page of your landscaping business with a contact form and a phone number, what it's doing is it's powering up your website because you have the more backlinks than anybody else. So Google and the internet is built completely on backlinks and keyword density. So whoever has the most of this stuff and it's the highest quality and it's the most of what a human would actually do. I'm not saying hiring somebody to just post a bunch of crud on the internet, uh, but doing something genuinely sitting down and writing blog post articles and creating YouTube videos and Instagram posts and things for your business that not only satisfy Google, but satisfy real people who are looking on their phones and laptops trying to find your business. For instance, like a landscaping video on YouTube that's saying, hi, I'm Joe with Joe's Landscaping in Atlanta, Georgia. Nice to meet you. Today, we're doing a project for a client right down the street from you, and we're building this retaining wall, and we're putting in a waterfall, and I'm gonna show you a before and after sequence of video footage of what this property look like before, during, and after, so you're getting the results in advance and you're seeing exactly what you'll get if you hire us. Come along. You don't have to be an actor. You don't have to be anything. You could just use your cell phone and create a video like this and then type all that stuff in the description. Now if you create a blog post article and attach it to your website and you embed that video and then you transcribe everything that you said into text and clean it up. Now you have a SEO rich search engine optimized blog post with a video, text, and links linking everybody back to your website. So you're driving everybody to your website. So if you only have one or two lead sources going on, like you're just doing Google ads or word of mouth. You're limiting yourself on all these other sources of, of, of leads, to getting your phone ring, contact forms, jobs, money. Then you're, you're really limiting yourself uh, because you might not be aware of everything that's available for you. Now, the frustrating part is how, how do you make the time for all this? You can get really good at this stuff. Uh, I would wake up in the morning before work a half an hour early. Anybody wake up and first thing you do is grab your phone? Okay, so it's like the worst thing you should do. But I would wake up in the morning and I'd grab my phone and I'd go on my, my blog. So uh, what's the best blog? WordPress.org, you can create your own free blog. If you have a website hosting domain, you can create uh, you can open up a blog page and start writing blogs. So I'd sit there and I would type an entire blog about Kelfus window cleaning in Sterling Heights and everything that they're going to get. Here's an example. We have three different distinct packages. One is we clean all the windows on the outside. Two, he and here's the pricing and here's pictures. Uh, three, 
We do the inside at outside tracks, sills, and screens. We've been proudly serving Macomb County and Oakland Township. We've done 4,000 clients. We're licensed and insured, highly referred. And just write all this stuff and a whole story about it with all the links linking back to the website. Then you take that post and you share it on Facebook and share it all over the page, place and you publish it. And then you share this with your clients. So you're creating search engine optimization to make your phone ring, okay? I would literally have been in a drive through at like Tim Hortons. Anybody have Tim Hortons? Whoa. Starbucks? <laughs> Typing up a blog post while I'm waiting for the coffee and then publishing it. So the, the next thing is when you're doing this, you're creating YouTube videos and blog posts and you're posting and you're creating what's called a, here you go. Uh, here you go. You, you, you basically have like, in your marketplace as a small business owner. You, are, uh, you can be a generalist. The next step is you can become a specialist. And then the next step is you can become an authority. And then the next step is a celebrity. And then celebrity authority. So when you're publishing information online, blog posts, articles, videos, Instagram posts, you're creating Facebook ads, and you're putting this out there for your customers to see and putting it directly in front of your, your local target market, what happens is they begin to know you, like you, and trust you before they even meet you. So they're picking up the phone because they've already seen your work, they already see what you're doing, and they like it versus calling somebody that they don't know. I call this guy on Google, he's got three reviews. This guy has 50 reviews, and they're gonna see on Google, all this, these extra links and sites and authority sites attached to your business name, if they look you up, they're gonna see videos popping up, they're gonna see blog posts, and now they can go, whoa, okay, this company's been around for a while. They're an authority. They have more credibility because you're giving them results in advance. And you can actually intentionally yeah, I, I used the word yesterday. I was like, you can manipulate the system. And, and he was like, uh, you shouldn't use that word. <laughs> but you can intentionally create this authority effect in your local marketplace to now where customers want to hire you because they saw you in the video and they like you. Does this make sense? Okay, so <laughs> once you start to get all this down and now you get good at doing all this, the hardest part is because you become, you're in handcuffs to your business in a way and you're trying to do all this marketing stuff and you're trying to make these videos and these blog posts and now it's to the point where you're like up till Sunday night at two o'clock in the morning doing all this crazy marketing stuff, okay? Um, do we have any questions yet? Because I'm going to move to the next thing. Um, oh, I had one. No, I lost it. I'll get, I'll get back to you. <laughs> just... Raise your hand if you think of it because I definitely... What is it? Oh, I remembered it. Oh, what is it? Is there, any, is there any really good like training material online like for people that are just really amateur with marketing and stuff like that? Just something we can follow like line by line and be mm -hmm. successful? Uh, for specifically for actually uh, Joshua Latimer and Brandon Vaughn, if you write down their names, they have something called the Marketing Super Course. It is mind blowing. Joshua Latimer? Yeah. You have guys like, uh, I won't name off all their names, but it's phenomenal. It's like a thousand dollar course, but if you watch that thing two, three times, you'll, be, you'll become fully equipped. Even Joshua Latimer. I'm talking about industry specific. Yes. Okay, so when you create the blog post, you're saying that you put the links from all the domains in the blog post? So when you create the, the blog post, there's, there's something called keyword density and link stuffing, which is a black hat SEO technique, which you shouldn't do. And I'm glad that you asked that question. So you want to be careful and just pepper these links in here and there. Like you've ever read an article on the internet and it says, it'll say a certain product, but it's like highlighted in blue, but you can click it and then it'll take you to something or take you to that thing. An embedded hyperlink, right? So you're creating these hyperlinks, which are actually, they're called, they're backlinks. And it's driving people to hopefully your website as soon as possible. And direct response marketing, advertising, when it comes to owning a, a, a local business, 
You want to get customers to your website and to pick up the phone as fast as possible. It's not something where you're going to take a sales letter and flip it on its side and create this whole long thing for, for customers before they buy something from you. So you want to drive them to your website as soon as possible by embedding these hyperlinks and then peppering in these other links because they're reading back and forth and it's making you become an authority because you're connected to all these domain authorities. You're borrowing uh, credit. And then I also have a course called the Marketing ROI course online. It's keithkelfus.com forward slash ROI. And it's an entire live event that I do each year. And um, it's all the recordings of that live event that teach you how to market your business. What was the next question? Does it cost, sorry? Is it free to be said or does it cost? Mm -mm. Anybody here in the room that, that gets it? I'll literally give it to you for 70% off. So if you buy the, co uh, the course online, I'm not here to sell you anything, but, uh, but it's only for this room specifically. So what were you gonna say? So is this the point where you try and target your market or is that later on? Yeah, so when we get into target marketing, this is actually psychology, like creating price transparency. You, you want on your, if this is your, I'm sorry, this is your website, if you start putting packages and pricing literally directly on your website and you start using keywords that are specific that speak the native language to the customers that you want to target and talking about the specific areas um, right in your marketing, like what, what is a, a city that you live in that you really want to do work in but you don't want to do work somewhere else? What's the city you want to do work in? Plymouth. Plymouth. Okay. So when you talk about that in the marketing, you're actually creating these, these disqualifiers that make people who are reading it say, oh, that's not for me, I don't, I'm not, I don't even live in that area. Or, oh wow, those, those price packages, like $6,500, I was looking for something for like maybe four or 500 bucks. You know, it, or whatever, it could be the opposite, right? It could be something for $99. But when you're publishing what, what you do and what you serve, to customers in the marketplace and you're being very transparent about it and putting that online and in your marketing materials, people see that and it resonates with them or it doesn't. So when you get very intentional and realize that you can intentionally control people's perceptions <laughs> based off your copywriting, copywriting is salesmanship in print, then you can get dramatically higher results when you when you get into the psychology of it. You can learn stuff like this uh, in a book called, um, sorry. Uh, this is an amazing book, you have to get this on Audible. Robert, and I'll get to your questions in a second. Cialdini has two books. The one book is called Persuasion. And then the other book is called persuasion. Get those two books. And then also to add to the book collection, you have to get the audiobook by John Jantz called Duck Tape Marketing. So it's J O N. And then the <laughs> one second. Then the final book that you, you must get to fill you in on everything that I'm talking about here is by R.L. Adams. Sorry. Is anybody, anybody in the room dyslexic? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Like you try to write one thing and something else comes out. It's called SEO Black Book. The reason I want you to read these books or listen to them on audible.com is because when you start investing your hard earned money in marketing and advertising or maybe hiring somebody to do it, now you know what's going on and you can read through their BS. There's something called black hat SEO techniques. Black hat marketing is where they're cheating the system. Back in the day you could buy Facebook likes, Instagram, Twitter likes and followers. With doing something like that will actually, it'll get you demoted in the search engines and you will become penalized by Google 
and they'll take your website from first place or first page and drop it all the way down to like the 14th page and it will take you like years to get back up. So be very careful and make sure everything that you do is 100% like legal, moral, ethical, on the up and up. Um, and you can get educated on all that stuff by these books by R.L. Adams. Uh, there is more questions before I go to the next phase. Can you write down the Joshua the thousand dollar marketing course you mentioned previously? Yeah. If if any of you guys buy it, I need to call him up and I need to cut off this. He's getting <laughs> no, but it's it's amazing. What's the name of the book? Again? The book is by R. L. Adams on Audible. dot com. He has several of them. S. E. O. Black Book. And he has books called SEO 2016, 2017, 2018. My friend Eric Reno owns a very successful roofing company. And I was passing him these books. And literally when I talk to him now, he's so enlightened on all this stuff. I'm like, where did you learn all this, dude? And it's specifically from the books. And I, and I watch it happen with people around me. Was there any more questions before I go to the next phase? Okay. Uh, that's called a sales and marketing super course. If you own a service business, that'll equip you with everything that you need to know. It's uh, very, very powerful stuff. So the third phase is conscious competence, right? Now we're going into the fourth step. Yeah, thank you so much. which is unconscious competence in your marketing. Unconscious competence is when you become totally fluid and really, really good at marketing and you have Instagram ads running for your business to your local marketplace. If that's not working, you're launching Facebook ads. You're uploading your customer list directly into Facebook and serving ads for your business directly on your client's timeline. You're remarketing to your customers and clients. You're running email marketing campaigns. Say that on Facebook, card again. The yeah. on Facebook so <laughs> if, if you, who here uses a, a Google contacts, Gmail? Anybody? Do you collect all of your customers' data and information? Yes. Obviously, first name, last name address, notes about them, especially their email. You want to take your, your customer list. This is like the most powerful thing. You export the entire list to a CSV file and, that, and now you import that list up into Facebook. And then, so, so Facebook has 140 different data points when, this stuff is, is like, e it's evil, right? Back in the day it was prophesized as like this is, but it's actually amazing for marketing because it will go out and it'll find, based off the email, the, your customer's profiles based off the email list you, you loaded. And now you can serve cheap ads directly to your customer's timeline on Facebook or their Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram. So they're like, wait a second, what's going on here? So if I wanted to dominate a local neighborhood, like here's a neighborhood, let's just say it's two square miles. I would go in the entrances of this neighborhood and I would put, uh, these are wire bandit signs that you stick in the ground. You can get them on signsonthecheap.com. You can get a whole stack of them. I'd stick wire bandit signs in all the entrances of the subdivision until they get mad and yell at me. Then I would go to Sun Gym and I would drop a postcard bomb mailing to all of these houses because this is the perfect neighborhood you want to work in, right? And I would do that repeatedly, not only doing that, all the neighbors that I, all the people I have in that neighborhood, you can go on your Google Maps and look at where all your customers are. You'd find the customers in that specific neighborhood, and then you'd create a segmented list. So you, you'd have to sit down for a couple hours and scrub your email list, but you can create a list of different neighborhoods, and now you can serve ads to clients specifically in that neighborhood. Does this make sense? Through Facebook. Through Facebook. So the next step is, you want to go on, you could do Send Gym or you can use something called Sly Broadcast. <laughs> okay. Okay, on slybroadcast.com, this is incredible. <laughs> you can take all of your customers' phone numbers. So I have like 4,000, 
500 customers' contact information. You can export all of the phone numbers into lists, and now you can create a ringless voicemail campaign, which is like, here's the way mine goes. Uh, the one I did this spring. Hi, this is Keith with Kelfis Landscaping and Window Cleaning. Uh, the reason I'm calling you today is because I was taking a look at our calendar and we've done some work for you in the past and the spring is rolling around. So if you're looking for any property maintenance, if you need landscaping done, if you need your windows clean, we'd be happy to serve you. And I'm just reaching out. My phone number is 586-265-8813. And my email is keith at kelfusservices.com. Okay, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Click. You upload that in the slide broadcast. And now you can launch that to thousands of people. It bypasses their phone. It doesn't ring and it goes to a, their voicemail. Oh my, I got a voicemail. Now when they listen to that, they think that you actually left that message for them and maybe they just missed the phone. So what happens is that's leverage and automation. What? Does that go to uh, cell phones and home phones or is it just cell phones? That's a good question. Okay. Any phone number. I think it goes to all phones. Okay. The interesting thing about that is, what's it? You had a question. What, what company is that here? Uh, this one is Sly Broadcast. You could use Send Jim. There's a bunch of them out there now. So I don't have time to get into GDPR, which is General Data Protection Regulation. <laughs> oh, you know about that? So as long as you've had explicit permission from your, your clients and your customers to do this, if they put their name inside of a contact form or if they've given you your email, you'll be fine. You only have to worry about doing this stuff if you're doing it in mass. If you started getting into, well, I have to be careful what I say. So uh, make sure you have your customers explicit permission before you market to them. How about that? Okay. And then you can also hire a lawyer and put terms of use and privacy policies on your website. So therefore, anybody who puts any information, why are you smiling? <laughs> you're, you're, you're like CYA right now, man. Sorry. <laughs> anybody who puts any information on your website, they're automatically agreeing uh, and, and, and you're verifying that uh, you and them, you're in compliance with taking their information and that you're not going to sell it to anybody. You're not going to you know, expose it on the black market. You're not going to uh, trade it with anybody that this is your own private list. And in the event, if there's a data breach on anything and your, your website gets hacked, any of your analytics or data, that you will notify them immediately by, by law. And um, they have tacit agreement with you and, and that you, you, you have a tacit contractual agreement that, that is such. So doing something like if you have a, a friend who owns a small business and you're like, hey man, give me your email list of all your clients and I'll give you mine. That's like totally illegal and you could literally, uh, you could get in big trouble for that. But if you market your friend's stuff on your email list and they, and they do the same with theirs, uh, that's okay and might not make your customers too happy unless you've, unless it, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay, so there's one more thing I wanna talk about before I go to this next thing. <laughs> And how much time do I have? As much as you need, we'll put it down. Okay, I want to show you how uh, the slide broadcast works, and I want to uh, warn you about this. So if you have a customer data list of 5,000 people, and you import all 5,000 of those at once, and you send out 5,000 or even 1,000 phone calls, you just literally set yourself up for doom because your phone is going to be ringing off the hook, and now you're going to make a lot of people mad. It's smart to take those and segment it and ex export them to an Excel spreadsheet and pump those out to 100 phone calls at a time. List of 100 and drip feed them into the system so you don't get overwhelmed with a whole bunch of work. There's, What's your time frame in between dropping those in? Three days, a week, two weeks? Uh, it depends on how many of those, of those leads are calling you asking for work. So you're gonna have to buffer it based off of your production capability and your, the capacity in which you can take on work. So if nothing happens and only two people call, go ahead and drop the next one, right? But it takes about a three week turnaround time from any marketing or advertising piece that you put in. There's about a three week cycle from which you start really seeing and looking at the results. It's not always immediate. So that's why you should always stay in the top of your customer's mind by putting out all this information that I'm talking about right here. 
You know, they might hire you one time, and then you didn't keep in touch with them via email, by a ringless voicemail, by calling them and following up with them. And now they go with somebody else who maybe not, doesn't even create a good service like you do. You just did your customer a disservice by not following up with them. You should follow up with them all the time, okay? So I hope you've all got that written down, slide broadcast. The next thing I wanna show you is an email marketing campaign. Okay, this is uh, insane. When you get customers' emails on your contact form and you collect them from every single customer you talk to on the phone, you start to build a list of email addresses. Let's just say you have 1,000. You can get an email autoresponder marketing sequence software that starts to communicate with all these customers on autopilot. We all get them inside of our phones. When you refresh your, um, you refresh your, your email every day, you see, people emailing you stuff, and you know that's automated. They're not typing that to you. Well, you can start to do the same exact thing with your clients and customers by putting out uh, monthly or even quarterly newsletters. So let's say you have a quarterly newsletter. Every single time there's some type of an event or holiday, you could do like Labor Day sales. You could go on and on and on. And how you do this is by creating a, a, a marketing calendar, and you plan this out. Uh, in your slow season, you say, this is what we're gonna do for the year in our marketing, okay? And email marketing is a big part of that. So here's all the different reasons why you can pick why you'd wanna follow up with your customers to keep offers going out in front of them all the time on their email so they go, oh yeah, 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 honey, we do need this project done. That's crazy, so, or maybe they're thinking about it and they got the email and they just kind of save it, and then when they're ready, they're gonna call you because you emailed them and your competition didn't, okay? So if you type up an, an email to uh, a, a customer and you do it in a personalized tone, like Mrs. Jones, you, wouldn't, uh, you, can, you can put their first name in it and then it'll automate it so their name actually pops up, but you can say the spring is rolling around and we're offering uh, these clean outs, pond clean outs, spring cleanups, anything, and we're giving a 10% a discount for the month of June, okay? You type up that one email and you upload your customer contact list, right? And now you can launch that email to a thousand people. And if that email works and, and, and customers start calling you and emailing you back, actually, yeah, I would like I would like you to come and do a clean out or do something like that. If it's a good email, then you want to add it to your autoresponder sequence, which means you put it in the chain of something that goes out every single spring this time now. So once you start to build up this whole arsenal of email marketing newsletters, they'll become automated to now they just start going out automatically to your customers all the time while you're out on some job site stressing out and trying to like fix some fire and then the phone's ringing. You're not, you, you totally forgot that like 3 p.m. on Friday this email went out to a thousand people and the leads just keep coming in. Does that make sense? So you're setting up these marketing systems inside of your business that it's just happening no matter what you're doing. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal way to create leverage. Okay, so the next step here is number four. I was aware that everything I'm talking about might be a little bit uh, overwhelming, a lot of information, because it is. What's that? Can I um, ask a question about email? Yeah. When, I, when, I, when people say, hey, just email me the quote, I hate that because it's very impersonal and they're just then comparing numbers. I want to be able to, but um, so is there a good way or a better way to send a quote that either has to go through my website or something that gives me better sales pitch than just sending an email? Here's the quote. You can email them a quote with a press kit that includes your, your general liability policy, a story about your business, and pictures of what you've done, and then links to your website inside of the email and attachments that they can get this whole kind of portfolio. You can give them a nice handwritten quote or a typed up quote, 
that also redundantly the computer you typed it from triggers a digital quote as well. Okay. I hope I'm answering the question. Yeah, I think so. I don't yeah. know how to do it. So because cloning things digitally is free, let's just say you, you went on Google Docs and you started to create uh, a portfolio of really nice pictures and pieces of information that you would like to give to a really big client that you're like, you, I really hope I land this job on, but just put everything in there that I possibly can. So when they see it, they just, they want to go with you because the other guy just sent them a quote, right? Well, what if you did that and you just duplicated it and you started adding it to every single one, right? So that, would that be like a PowerPoint, but in an email? So how you actually do it is, do you use a, a like, do you use Jabber or a, no. a software program? Just QuickBooks. QuickBooks? Okay, let's do, you, what's your email service provider? Uh, iCloud. iCloud? Okay, so say on the desktop or your computer, do you do it on your phone or your computer? Uh, both. Both. So let's say your phone or your computer, you have a folder with your, your proof of insurance before and after photos of what you've done, uh, a story about your business. You can even include a couple video links to some videos you've done. Anything that you can add in there that creates more value and creates more trust for the customer. You're just gonna drag and drop those things inside of the email as attached links. Just like somebody when sends you an attachment, right? So you throw those attachments in there each time. Now that takes extra work. That might take extra 30 seconds. Sometimes you don't have that. That's when you start getting into uh, software that does it for you automatically. And then that'll buy you back more time. Does that make sense? Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an extra thing that you can do aside from just sending a digital quote. And then you can trigger an email if you do have a, a basic software that does it, that follows up with them automatically on the spot, says we'd be very happy to work with you. Um, another one that follows up with them, if they don't accept the quote in 48 hours, it automatically follows up with them in a e with an email that's, you know, hey, we're following. Oh, I have five minutes. Ten minutes? What do you want, five or ten? Oh, like, I have, ten is all I can have, I'll do ten. Fifteen? Is it okay? Yeah. Keep talking. Okay, I'll speed this up. When you get really good at all this stuff, then you find yourself like getting frustrated because you're doing all this. Now you're good at it. You are unconsciously competent, which means you're fully fluid at marketing and you're doing it. You have all these marketing systems set up in your business. The phone is ringing all the time. It's really, really cool, but it's a double-edged sword because now you're in handcuffs to doing all this stuff all the time. Some of it's automated, some of it you have to keep doing. There's a new step that helped me out tremendously after uh, in the last two years, and that's the, f that's the fourth phase in the marketing progression pyramid, and that's hiring other people to do it for you. I'm not talking about your little cousin David who's 18. You're like, oh, I, has anybody ever like, you just wish you could have that person in your business and you start looking for that person to hire. Yeah, but I, I can't pay him like 30 bucks an hour. I need someone for like, like 10 bucks an hour or something. You know, somebody I could pay cash on the side, they just do it two, three hours a week. Doing that stuff, um, you can try it. For me, it's blown up in my face. I've tried to hire people from like my cousin to my little sister and I'd put them in my office uh, on the weekends and now I'm trying to teach them how to do it all and then they're messing it up and I'm pulling my hair out. So I found these amazing websites, and I know everybody here has heard of Fiverr.com, Upwork.com. You might have even dabbled in the past and gone on Fiverr.com and spent $5 to have somebody do something silly. Well, these websites have progressed so much to now where you have real industry professionals all over the world who are experts at pay-per-click, Google ads, Facebook ads, video editing, blog post creation, internet marketing campaigns, project managers, people that can help you with all of the marketing inside of your business. And now they work for you. You don't have to put them on the books. You don't have to put them in the office. You don't have to pay payroll taxes on them. I have six different virtual assistants working from me, anywhere from my Facebook ads guy is in Spain. He's awesome. 
My new Google Ads guy is in Greece. My video editor who was just voxering me uh, right before this said my new, up, my new video is in Dropbox right now and he's in Russia. I pay him $50 per video. Uh, I have, I'm not gonna tell you their names, you gotta find your own. <laughs> but my uh, other virtual assistant who's part, part time just when I need her, she's a data entry specialist. When I was talking about exporting these lists into sly broadcasts, like oh my God, figuring out Excel and doing it all and then you get stuck, I just call her up. And then or on, on upwork.com, I have a contract set up in an escrow account. What happens is, <sighs> My wife and I were in the office over the winter trying to do this, and we were like frustrated. I try to get her to help me sometimes because she's really smart and good at stuff. And she, uh, she delegated the task to the virtual assistant who is our new data entry specialist. This would have taken us like, I, I swear to God, like nine hours I did the math. We wouldn't have been able to go out to eat on our date night or anything. I send this data to the data entry specialist and she literally puts it in spreadsheets like immediately segmented just the way I want it and she was done in like 20 minutes and she's $20 an hour I think I paid her like that whole week like 12 bucks or something so for under a thousand dollars a month I have six different virtual assistants working who are experts doing all these things right so I want you to go on upwork.com you have to write this down and fiverr.com which is s f i v e r r.com and start looking through the different people that can help you do the sales and marketing and all this crazy stuff, search engine optimization inside of your business. May I say something about Fiverr? Yeah. I agree with Keith, it's come a long way in the past couple of years, I started using it a few years ago. Uh, you're going to have to sift through some of the people that are just getting started and trying to build their portfolio and be patient about who you're talking with and make sure you're not spending a lot of money in the wrong direction. Fair enough. Exactly. So at some point you gotta pull the trigger and spend money. Yeah. You get what you pay for. If you try to get somebody that's like six dollars an hour, you're gonna get somebody who barely speaks English. Like uh, my, uh, my blog post article writer, I had to get rid of because she was very, she had a master's degree. She was in um, Asia or something. She was writing very, like everything was there, but the entire dialect was like in Pakistan and it made no sense. So you can't lie to yourself. You have to get rid of that person as soon as possible only because it's not gonna fit with your target market. When your customers are reading this or your audience is reading this stuff, they're gonna be like, this looks like robotic. It looks like it's not even real. So you might wanna find somebody at Upwork.com who is a blog post article writer who specializes specifically in writing articles for the construction industry and has been doing it for 12 years and has done work for 3,000 people and has a five-star review. He's gonna cost you like $60 an hour, but you get what you pay for, right? So um, also I have a podcast editor in Southeast Asia who's $12.50 an hour. I think I pay her like uh, a couple hundred bucks a month, less than that. Uh, so, so here's how you would syndicate all of this information and delegate it to a, a virtual assistant. It'd be really nice to have, a, you say sometimes you get so frustrated, you're like, oh my God, I wish I had an assistant that would help me with this stuff, because I can't do it all. Well, you can now, you can have virtual assistants that help you. So here's the syntax, uh, I'll be done completely in like five minutes, I'm literally almost done. Here's the content syndication marketing strategy. Where's my thing? This is like the really exciting part. Uh, I'll get rid of all this. This is, uh, this part's insane. This is like my favorite part. Okay, that's enough. Okay, this is the top town method. It's, it's what I call, it's my content syndication marketing strategy, okay? So let's just say you're on a job site and you take your phone out and you create an entire video that shows your customers results in advance like I was talking about. Hi, my name is Joe with Joe's Landscaping in Macomb County, Michigan or Atlanta, Georgia. 
The YouTube algorithm is listening to every single word you're saying. The zip code is 48044. It's listening and it's indexing everything you're saying, right? Speak as if though it was being transcribed. So I know it takes time to get aware of this stuff and to, and to do it, so it's not gonna be easy at first. But anyways, take your phone out and make a video and walk around the whole job site and show your customer everything that is going on so they can want to hire you, right? You take that video and you can do this yourself or have a virtual assistant do it. You're gonna send the video to rev.com and it's 60 cents per minute of transcription. Real human transcriptionists are gonna take everything you spoke in that video and they're gonna send it back to you in 24 hours, typed out. Okay? Or you can have your virtual assistant do this for you, right? Because I, I don't have time to even go on rev.com anymore, but it's good to get good at this stuff so you know what's going on. The next thing is you wanna have your virtual assistant who does blog post articles Go out and create a blog post article for you. A, a bare minimum of 500 words. If you can get up to like 2,000 words plus, that's like authority type stuff. In the blog post article, you're gonna have a headline of something very keyword rich about like the most, people don't like respond to the word the best anymore because that's so been overused. Um, the most luxurious landscape installations in Atlanta, Georgia, or something like that. And then it'll be a whole article that you're gonna pay a blog post writer to take this transcription and then format and add everything that you said into a well-worded, keyword-dense, backlink-rich blog post with this YouTube video embedded inside of the blog post. So what you're doing is you're repurposing this content. All you did was make a video. Now you have a transcription and a blog post and a video embedded inside of it with backlinks going to all those authority domains I was talking about going back to your website. But the next thing you're gonna do is you can take and you can extract the audio from the video and now you can create an intro and an outro and you can create a podcast. So everything that you said in the video is now a podcast. So I have a, a pre-recorded intro and outro. It goes, welcome to the Untrapped Podcast podcast. I'm Keith Kalfas, and we talk about all these things. My blog post editor in Asia takes that, and I, she now automatically just takes my latest videos, and she puts an <laughs> intro and an outro, and goes on uh, libsend.com. I don't know if anybody here wants to start a podcast. I know Paul Jameson has one. And then Libsyn, uh, it's a content distribution platform. It pumps out the podcast, the videos, anything that you want um, to all these different platforms. So now you have a podcast on like iTunes, Stitcher, Anchor FM, all these different places. You didn't even create a podcast, you just made a video. You just made one video on a job site for eight minutes. Okay, does that make sense? So when you hire these people to do this stuff, these virtual assistants, these VAs, you can get this entire marketing wheelhouse going inside of your business that's just spitting out content all over the internet that's rich and specifically to your target market and leading back to your website and your phone and all you're doing is just creating one video. What's that? How long did it take you to get to this point? And, and, and yeah. I realized the depth of that question. But as you've grown with this to get to this point, how much money did you start spending and when did you realize that there was a return on it? So two years of, well, I mean, I started out here step by step by step. Th that, and that's a good question. So this first step here was like uh, one year in starting my small business. Then I got really, really frustrated and I went to phase two, which was like I was copycating everything that I saw everybody else doing and it wasn't working too well. And then I started investing in, uh, uh, sorry, online courses and programs of learning how to marketing and buying all the books while working out. While working out in the field all day, I'd be listening to audiobooks and getting um, competent at all this stuff. And that's what got me up in this area after about three years. 
You can speed it up a lot faster based off what I'm talking about right now because I'm showing you the, the progression model right now. If you get the information and, and start listening to these audiobooks and informing your brain right away, then you can skip through these. And I'd say you could be up to this level within six months, your first slow season that comes by, and you can dive into it and commit and block out the time on your calendar. Say like, okay, every single Friday night from six o'clock until I go to bed, I'm gonna work on this stuff and building marketing systems inside of my business. And one by one, you start to implement these systems. So I'd say, I'd say six months you can get to that point with the virtual assistants now, all this I'm talking about, so you can syndicate and repurpose all the marketing, kind of like on autopilot. I'd say that'd be another six months. The speed of implementation, the speed that you implement this into your business is how fast it'll work. So when we were talking about Upwork.com, pulling the trigger and spending the money and hiring somebody and watching them doing it wrong will actually be more profitable for you because you'll see, oh my God, I spent $250 for a person to create this whole entire, remember I was talking about the email sequence of all those emails? You can actually hire somebody to write you something called a soap opera sequence and they'll write the entire thing out for you and you just go in and kind of adjust it, boom, done. And they're an expert article writer who's written for magazines in the landscaping industry for 15 years. And you literally just paid them $250 to give you this whole sequence that now you can just insert into your business. But does that make sense? What's so funny? Oh. Okay, so once you get all this down, I was up till 2.30 this morning doing this crap, okay? It's a lot of work, which brings you to the final, final step, which we're working on right now, <laughs> which is phase five. What? Oh, <laughs> phase five is where you make that hire of the project manager who delegates to all of the virtual assistants. So you started from the bottom just like you do in your business and you're at the point where you have you know, crews working out for you, you've got a secretary, you've got a calling center, you've got a marketing department. But I really believe that this is the new evolution and having your own marketing department inside of your business is through a team of virtual assistants that are all being ran by a project manager, by a coordinator. Somebody that you might pay 25 bucks an hour to part-time who is also a virtual assistant. Not a person in an office, a VA who specializes in project managers, which I'm scoping out and trying to find this hire right now. It's been three months. Then once they all are working for that project manager, now you start to introduce them all to each other. And now they start it creates a synchronicity effect and now everybody's on the same page and then you can ramp up your marketing and do anything that you want just by speaking it or sending an email. Does that make sense? So at this level, now you move into automaticity. That's where like, you just have computer screens, you're looking at stats, analytics, data, and you're just like flying off your gauges, adjusting things. And when something's wrong, you can spot it because you've been there. So. Any questions? I hope I didn't overwhelm anybody. Are you going to write a book? Huh? Are you going to write a book? I've written two books. Uh, I got a couple of them over there because somebody emailed me and asked me. They said they wanted to buy a book. My third book is coming out next spring for sure now. And it's called uh, The Marketing ROI, How to Automate the Sales and Marketing Inside of Your Service Business. And then, um, so look out for that. That's on, it'll be on audible.com, on Amazon. You can uh, go into Barnes and Nobles and you'll be able to order it there and get it mailed to you. And then I also have a yearly event called the Marketing ROI Live Workshop. So it's an event that takes place in Michigan. And um, just go to keithkelfus.com if you wanna check that out and come to that. There will be phenomenal industry leaders there teaching how to implement all this stuff into your business. Uh, the last one that we did in uh, this past September was like mind blowing. There's like people crying and stuff because, <laughs> not because of the marketing information, but. It's the cost. <laughs> no. Oh, it's only uh, 300 bucks a ticket and it's a two day event. So it's, 
you, you, you really get out what you put in, but is there any questions? When's your next event? My event was going to be this September, but we're pushing it back till November or December. My wife and I just moved, and we've had a lot of stuff going on in our personal life, so uh, I don't want to launch something that spreading ourselves too thin. I really, really care about all the attendees at my event and that they get the best, that they get transformation and transcendence. And so if we have to postpone that to make it better, then it'll be that much better when it comes. But it's called the marketing ROI. With all the calls that you got coming in, yeah. do you let the phone ring and let it go to voicemail? How do you follow up with them? And yeah. Vent through so you're not wasting time. So at first I was answering the phone all the time. Then I started creating block time at you know, 11 a.m. till noon before uh, all the guys and we all go to lunch. And then in the afternoon, then I got so sick of that because like a fire will break out in the business at 11 and I can't do it. Like you can never stick to the things that you say you're gonna do because you're running a business. It's like a, a, a chess table that's rotating and turning in real time. It's so frustrating, but it, that's, that's how you make things happen. But I finally pulled the trigger and I hired a company called Jill's Office. If you go on my YouTube channel, it's like five videos down. I did a whole video about it. They're a... We use something like that. Oh, you do? Saves. What do you use? Uh, pin collars. Pin collars? Pink. pink collars? Yep. Sweet. Time. I don't pick up a phone from April until July 4th. He doesn't pick up a phone from April until July 4th. So I use Jill's office. They have different packages based on minutes. They're, prof they're professionally trained virtual secretaries. They're like in Utah. Uh, my work phone forwards to Jill's office. There's an entire, this is genius by the way, there's an entire script, because I was a little frustrated and scared. I was like, oh my God, well, like, how, do, how are they gonna know how to talk to my customers? What if they send me a bunch of stuff that I don't even wanna do? How, how's this gonna work? And I just settled down and I went through their process, because when you get to the point where that pain of changing is less painful than the pain of staying the same, you'll change. So. Say yeah. in the like years that I've followed you, that well, thing is like it comes to my mind all the time. Well, I stole it from somebody. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when the pain of changing is less painful than the pain of staying the same, you'll change. <laughs> and 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 I know for me, my personality type, I'll wait till something gets so bad. Like, like we just bought our first house. I always thought like, no, mortgage means agreement until death. I didn't want to buy a house. And I was up all night like sweating bullets and having nightmares the day before I signed the mortgage agreement. And now we have a nice house and everything's nice and it's like $200 more a month. It's like, it's, I'm so glad that we did it. But anyways, we, we, uh, I hire a company called Jill's Office. They're professionally trained virtual assistants who are experienced in answering the phone specifically for service-based businesses. So they have an entire script based off the, the Q&A form that they sent me. They are literally, they pick up the phone. They're like a little too happy. They're like, thank you for calling Kelfus Professional Services. How can I help you? So I'm getting uh, these emails from them inside of their app that says uh, Dave Jones called. Uh, we booked him for a window cleaning for $349 next Wednesday at from 1 until 3 p.m. And he's booked. I'm like, ching. We literally just show up and do the window cleaning and get paid because it's already blocked out on the calendar because we've systematized it. But all the landscaping quotes I have to visit in person, we block out times based off area. Uh, I do landscaping quotes. In a tight radius, there's like four zip codes where we live. So in the morning, I'm in this zip code. In the afternoon, I'm here. And in the evening, I'm in this zip code. So they book my quotes according to zip code when they talk to the customer and qualify them. So I'll have like 10 quotes booked. And I just show up at the quotes because the secretary already handled it. Does that make sense? Jill's office. These guys, whether, whatever company it is, they close 60 to 70% of the calls that come in for them. So they send them a quote. I get 60 to 75% of whatever they, whatever they quote. Say, say that on the mic, dude. So all these on uh, phone services, virtual assistants, we send out, we get about 500 quotes a year, and we're closing 60 to 70% of them. And all they're doing is giving them everything that gonna, what we're going to do, their expectations, what they should expect us to do, what they should do. And it, the quote gets approved, I schedule it, and we just, it's in the system. It saved us 
from the college? Yeah, it saved us hundreds of hours. Here's one thing that I learned. It's not all or none. You don't have to just pull the trigger and hire someone for like two grand a month. I used to freak out about this. Oh my God, I got to lease an office and put a secretary on payroll. You can literally start out and hire somebody one hour a week. Just try it. Just do an experiment. Okay, I'm going to try this, but I want to start at the lowest, lowest possible. One hour per week and just see if it works. Okay, next, and then we'll do five hours per week. I'll start out by hiring one virtual assistant one time on Fiverr.com and I'm only going to spend... $25 and see how it works. If it works, you know, give yourself a budget. One huge thing you could do is start a brand new business checking account and peel off whatever it is for you. For me, it was 7% of gross annual revenue. So when I did 100 grand a year, it was 7,000 a year. I broke that up amongst the season to this much a month. I said, this is my allotted, allotted amount that I can spend on marketing and advertising every single month. So for me at one time it was 500 a month, right? In my internet business, it's $1,000 a month, right? So if you have a little bit more money left over, you can start to play. Peel off the money in advance and start saving in a separate checking account. So now that money is set aside specifically for hiring your first virtual assistant, hiring a calling center, find the biggest pain point in your business that relates to, to marketing and everything that we're talking about. And then you can start to free up your time a little bit to make yourself busier so you can do more crap. You know what I'm saying? So that's the end of my talk. Is there any more questions? I hope that served you. It's my honor. Thank you so very much. And I appreciate it. Thank you.